DK Metcalf is a very interesting player. He's clearly one of the most physically gifted players that's coming out of the draft, but the question is how well would that translate into actually being a talented NFL wide receiver? I could just talk about him if I wanted to, but instead let's jump into how he can actually play on the field, and there's a few things I noticed that I really like about him. One thing I like about him right off the bat is his ability to turn his head around and look up for the ball. Like on this play for example, there is press coverage right over there, and Metcalf is running a go route, so this should be a great way to beat press coverage. And now if we take a look after this play starts to develop, Metcalf wasn't really able to get too much separation, which you know happens, especially when you're playing against good corners like LSU has. But take a look at what he does now, I mean he turns his head around and is still in great position to potentially make a catch. If this ball is close, Metcalf has a much better chance of reaching up and making the catch than the corner would, even though the corner made sure there was not much separation at all. Now this ends up being a wild throw, so it doesn't matter, but if it was a good throw, Metcalf absolutely could have come down with it. At the combine, Metcalf measured in at 6'3 and 228 pounds, which is pretty big for a receiver. Meanwhile, Julio Jones is listed at 6'3, 220 pounds, so at least as of right now, according to the listings, Metcalf is actually bigger than Julio Jones. Even Mike Evans, who's 6'5, only weighs 225 pounds, so Metcalf actually weighs more than him despite being 2 inches shorter. So basically, when you match his height and weight with his ability to turn his head around quickly, it can create a lot of jump balls to go his way. He turns those 50 50 balls into kind of 90 10 balls. But there's another way him being a big guy can be beneficial. If you take a look at this one, for example, that's where he is on the screen. It's one-on-one -on -one coverage right now, so what that corner is going to do is basically try to push him to the sideline as much as possible. He wants to force Metcalf towards the sideline, so that way if Metcalf does go up to try to make a catch, he can just push him out of bounds. So if Metcalf was running a route here, he probably would run in that direction. He'd probably try to get past the corner to his left and then get around him. So the corner is going to be ready to go in that direction, and its momentum is going to be kind of taking him in that direction as well. So Metcalf puts his right arm right there. That's the point of contact that Metcalf has right now. The reason for that is because he's not running a route, he's actually blocking for a run on this play. And as you'll see, once I press play, he can block very well. He basically just throws a guy to the ground, so it was really just a great block by Metcalf. Did that really matter too much on that play? Well, not really. But in my opinion, who cares? I mean, at certain points, you will need a wide receiver who can block, and I personally think it could be a huge benefit to a team if you have a good blocking receiver. But okay, enough about those things, let's get into what everyone wants to talk about. If we take a look at this play, for example, that's where Metcalf is, and it is press coverage. Also, if you notice, Texas Tech's safety is all the way over there, way closer to the middle of the field. In fact, he's actually closer to the sideline on the top half of the screen than he is to the sideline on the bottom half of the screen. So this means that there is going to be a giant gap right over there where Metcalf could try to get to. What the corner is going to do is try to initiate contact with Metcalf. What Metcalf is doing is basically sort of faking as though he's going down to the bottom half of the screen. Not even a lot, it's very little, but it is a slight enough move that when he does start going straight down the screen and runs as fast as he can, he can now get wide open. He has great breakout speed, that's another thing I really like about him. I mean he ran a 4.3340 and honestly he gets to his top speed very quickly as well. Really, that first move can be just about everything oftentimes in a play, and this one will be another example of that. Once again, it's press coverage, and once again, Metcalf is running a deep route down the field. A go route really is the best way to beat press coverage, and that's a good thing because Metcalf loves to run go routes. If you take a look at right now, his opposing corner doesn't break in at all, he's going straight back to try to make sure that he takes away a potential go route. But what's interesting here is take a look at which direction the corner is facing. He's facing up to the top half of the screen, which does make some sense. If Metcalf does run that route that you see on the screen, this would be the perfect way to face. However, what Metcalf is actually going to do is kind of break down a little. It's hard to tell if this was by design or if Metcalf just saw what was going on and took advantage of it, but I would probably guess the latter. I have to imagine this is just DK realizing what's going on and figuring out a way to get past the guy. Because it would be tough to design a play like this since how would you know which direction that corner is facing? As of right now, there still isn't any separation, but the corner now has to turn his shoulders around. Doing that will slow you down a bit and it will allow Metcalf to get wide open down the field. Now he was very open, but since the throw was behind him, this is good news for Arkansas as the ball could fall underneath him and it even could be an interception. But notice how Metcalf creates contact here, and you might be thinking, wait a second, isn't that a push off? In live, it kind of looks like it, but it's actually not at all. What he simply does is slows down and then creates contact with that corner. This isn't a penalty because technically the corner is running into him, not the other way around. He also doesn't actually push him off in any direction. He creates the contact just to slow him down, but he doesn't actually push in any direction. Because he didn't do that, this now means that it's not a penalty and he's able to leap up and make the catch. That is also something I really like in a young player is their ability to know what they can and can't get away with and to know what is and isn't a penalty. I mean, I think this is a very good example of what isn't actually a penalty by rule this isn't a penalty and won't get called. But I also think something like this can be effective because if you then create this type of contact, then later in the game, if you create more contact and actually do push off, the refs will be less likely to call it because they know you will have clean contact from time to time. Not only that, but I think it can frustrate opposing defensive players. And having your opponents be frustrated can absolutely be a very valuable tool. I mean, how often have we seen guys just take dumb penalties just because they're frustrated? It happens all the time. 
So being a big receiver like that and knowing what you can get away with and what isn't the penalty, I keep saying can get away with, but the reality is that's not a penalty, and knowing what you can do to cause contact without it being a penalty can help you in so many different ways. And of course, him just being a giant guy obviously helps with that. Playing press coverage is just so tough against Metcalf, and this next play will be another example of that. That's where he is on a screen, and what Alabama's corner is actually going to do is try to create contact at the line. As you see, he's sticking his left arm out to try to get on Metcalf's left shoulder pad. So Metcalf is simply going to do is just swat his hand in that direction. If you're a strong enough guy, you can get away with this. And now if we take a look, Alabama's corner is basically facing down to the bottom of the screen. So all Metcalf has to do is simply cut over him and he can get wide open. Even though the throw is a bit too far, Metcalf was still able to make the catch in stride and run it all the way for a touchdown. I think it's plays like that that make you realize, okay, now I see that people think this guy could tear the NFL apart next year. It really makes things so difficult to play coverage against him. Like, if we take it this one, it's not quite press coverage, but it's pretty close. He's right there on the bottom half of the screen. This time I put him in a rectangle instead of a circle, I have no idea why. Welcome to Jackson Cougar Sports, where I get crazy with my geometry. But anyways, moving on to this next play, something very similar is going to happen. Alabama's corner is actually going to try to get both his arms on Metcalf, and he really wants to get both his hands right there, right where you see on the screen. So again, what Metcalf is going to do is very simple. He just hits that left hand away, and then he runs to the right. Since he's running that slant route, it allows him to get completely free and open. One thing I've definitely noticed is Metcalf is clearly right-handed, and definitely likes to swat people's hands away with his right hand and then move to the right of them. Alabama's corner clearly realized that as well, as if you take a look at this play, he's once again only going to use one hand to try to create contact, but this time instead of his left hand, he's going to try to use his right hand. Now as you see, Metcalf will still use his right hand to try to get the corner's right hand out of the way, so now simply just because he has farther to go, he can't quite get it off as cleanly as he would have liked to. This also now means that he has to break in this direction, which he doesn't love to do. He likes to break to the inside of the field. With that being said, Metcalf still creates enough separation that he is open for a period of time. Not wide open, it really would have taken a perfect throw, but he still was open. The corner made a great play to come back and was actually able to keep pace with Metcalf on that one, which allowed him to knock the ball away. And also, the fact that there was a safety in the area means you can't just throw it as deep as you want to and let Metcalf catch up to it. You do kind of have to hit him where he's at, so it was a much more difficult throw than it would have been if there was only a cover one, for example. But then the question remains, well why don't you just not play press coverage against him at all? And the problem is because then these things can happen. As of right now, he's on the bottom half of the screen, and what's going to happen is the corner who's in charge of covering him is actually not going to create any contact at all and basically just run straight back. Knowing that Metcalf loves to run deep, and also the fact that Alabama is up 21, so they could look for some deep passes, both those things have made Alabama decide they're going to try to make sure they don't get beat by Metcalf. But take a look at what happens. Um, some of it is going to be off screen, but basically Metcalf just cuts back in and is able to get wide open because that corner was so focused on taking away something deep. Now by far and away, Metcalf's biggest knock going into draft is kind of his quickness. We all know how fast he can be when he's running in a straight line, but how fast can he be when he has to move around? How good is his footwork? Because we all know in every position, footwork means so much. And in my opinion, it's still pretty solid. I know his three cone drill was pretty bad, and his quickness isn't going to be what makes him his money, but he still has solid footwork. Like on this play, for example, it's press coverage, and what Metcalf is going to do is kind of just fake as he was going to the top half of the screen. Because of that little slight move, he's now able to get wide open, and that corner is facing the complete wrong direction. That's nothing major, but it was still a pretty impressive move, and now he's in great position to try to get open. The corner's not facing him, which is huge because Metcalf is cutting here, and now he's wide open. Now, the one knock on this play is it looks like he cut a little bit too early by the way he cut before the first down marker on a third and nine. So that was probably a mental mistake, however, at least athletically, there's no doubt this guy can really play. Having big receivers can be very beneficial, especially in a red zone type situation, and that's exactly what I think Metcalf could bring to an offense. He's probably one of the most controversial players that's available in this draft. I mean, there's some people that are saying that he should be a top 10 pick, while there's other people that are saying he shouldn't even be drafted in the first round. He's the only guy I can think of in recent memory that a lot of people are calling a future bust, and just as many people are calling the next Calvin Johnson. One of the things that's undeniable about him is his athleticism. I mean, the fact that he's so big and still so fast is truly just remarkable. That's something you can't teach, but it's definitely very valuable, and definitely something a lot of teams will look at when they're looking at drafting a wide receiver. He can also just make some special catches. Some of these catches that make you say, oh my god, how did he do that not just catches but plays as a whole he can make these outstanding highlight reel type plays that just not many other receivers can make one problem that i didn't really bring up in this video because it's hard to bring up in a breakdown is the fact that he has had some pretty serious injury problems although there was nothing major nothing has seemingly been lingering on for too long so it definitely could just be freak injuries it is absolutely possible that he'll still end up being effective in nfl and he won't get hurt at all in the nfl and that's just sort of some freak injuries that happen and just bad luck early in his career but it's also possible that that's not the case so it is something that you want to keep your eye on Although, just in my opinion, I wouldn't really worry about it too much. If you want to draft Metcalf, I would draft him and wouldn't really worry about the injuries too, too much. You never know when it comes to drafting rookies, but I think Metcalf can definitely be a very effective player in the NFL. <laughs>